Article 2. Articles 2 through 5 are planning and zoning articles. They are not, by law, uh, able to be amended. So as we did last year, I would at this time entertain a motion to consider Articles 2 through 5 as a group so that our planning director can go through those with us. Do I have a motion moved by Ms. Barnes? Do I have a second to that, seconded by Mr. Griffin? So this will simply allow, hopefully, for a quicker presentation of these zoning and planning articles. All those in favor of addressing them as a group, please raise your voter card. Thank you. Uh, any opposed? All right. Uh, at this time, I'm going to uh, entertain a motion to waive the reading of Articles 2 through 5 in their entirety due to their length. I have a motion in that respect. Moved by Mr. Griffin, seconded by Mrs. Barnes. All those in favor? Down hands. Any opposed? All right. I promise my last procedural motion is to open discussion on Articles 2 through 5. Do I have a motion on that? Moved by Mr. Griffin, seconded by Mr. Bridal. And now I am going to recognize our town planner who will take us through Articles 2 through 5. If you have questions, um, you certainly can uh, come to the podium, and um, if you have a question on Article 2, why don't we have those questions come up uh, while, uh, after Mr. Bichon has concluded his presentation on Article 2 and, and sequentially from there. Jason? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm presenting Articles 2 through 5 for you this morning. Um, they're the Planning Board's proposed uh, zoning articles. Um, before I begin, just to let you know, the full text may be viewed on the display boards out in the uh, hallway this morning. Um, they'll be here throughout the day. And they'll be also displayed at the meeting on March, or the vote on March 13th. Um, and the full text is also available in the town offices and on the town website. And I'll begin now with Article 2. I'll go through a purpose um, and overview of each of these articles. On Article 2, the purpose is to provide clarification about the existing requirements for personal services establishments. And by that, we're talking about beauty and barber shops, nail salons, tanning salons, and similar services to those. Uh, an overview of this article, this article includes a new definition of personal services establishment under section 1.6. Also included is much needed cross-referencing between section 2.8, which is the town center district section, and section 325A of the use regulations. Uh, conformance with RSA 313A as it pertains to such establishments has been verified as well. Um, so this is basically a housekeeping amendment and ensures consistency throughout the zoning ordinance for this particular use. Article 3. Article 3, okay. Article 3, the purpose of this one is to allow dog daycare centers, which currently are not enumerated in the zoning ordinance in the industrial zoning district. Uh, this article establishes a new section 325E under Article 3 use regulations. It also defines dog daycare center under section 1.6, the definition, definition section. Uh, the key components for this use would include hours of operation from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. with no overnight boarding, limiting the use to the industrial zoning district with site plan and or subdivision approval required, and specifying the need for compliance with the town's animal control ordinance and any other applicable regulations such as um, the RSAs, the state RSAs on, on this subject. Um, just as a side note, there are a few of these uses in Hampton right now, um, but those uses did require variances as it's not enumerated in the ordinance. Um, we've been receiving, the planning office has been receiving an increasing amount of interest in this particular use, so the board uh, decided to propose enumerating it um, this year. Seeing no questions, Jason, why don't you take us through number four? All right. Uh, the purpose of Article 4 is to clarify and strengthen the requirements of the professional office residential district. And just to give an overview of where that district is located, it's roughly from where the Center School and Toll Ave area is on Winnicunit, eastward just short of Mill Road, um, the easterly portion of Academy Avenue, and portions of High Street around the cemetery and across, abutting and across from the cemetery. That's the approximate area of that zoning district. Uh, as an overview, this article is proposed in response to comments received regarding difficulties interpreting some of the language in Section 2.7. 
The proposed modifications provide a greater understanding of what is permitted in the zoning district. Changes to the principal uses are consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Um, uses such as two-family, multifamily, churches and schools, which are common in this district already, are spelled out in, in, the, in the proposed language. Uh, corrections were made to height, setback, and area regulations, which did not make sense as written. So basically referencing back to the RA zone requirements, which was the pre predominant um, district prior to the POR district being uh, uh, created. Um, general uh, clarification is provided regarding parking, loading, and signs, and a reference to the site plan review regulations regarding architectural design has also been included. All right, seeing no questions, on to Article 5. And Article 5, the purpose of this article is to incorporate general amendments to the town's accessory dwelling unit ordinance, which was adopted in March 2017, consistent with state law and based on our local implementation efforts. As an overview, this article amends the ADU ordinance to specify that no lot with more than one single-family dwelling or manufactured, manufactured housing located upon it shall be eligible for an accessory dwelling unit. The accessory dwelling units are subject to all applicable um, provisions of the Wetland Conservation District Ordinance, that a wastewater development charge shall be paid prior to receiving a building permit, that notification to the Department of Public Works for all accessory dwelling unit applications is required, and that the recording of the Declaration of Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions shall occur prior to the issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy. And this pertains to that new um, ordinance that was enacted That's last correct. year. That's correct. It was enacted last year, yes. All right. Seeing no questions, thank you, Jason. Thank and you. as Jason mentioned, the full text of these uh, amendments are available in the foyer today, will be available at town office, yep. and will be available when you come in to vote on March 13th at Winnicott. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Our next article is of the same uh, family, if I can call it that, as uh, <coughs> two through five, it's a uh, it's a planning zoning article, and as such, cannot be amended. It was a petitioned article, and as I understand it, it went through the hearing process. And our proponent uh, is here today, Ms. Bielabrowski. Uh I will recognize after I read uh, article article six. Are you in favor of the adoption of amendment number five as petitioned for the Hampton zoning ordinance as follows? Modify Articles 4.1 and 4.11 of the Zoning Ordinance to change the minimum required lot size and lot area per dwelling unit in the RA Zone to 30,000 square feet, where 15,000 square feet is currently required. Not recommended by the Planning Board. Is there a motion to open Article 6 for discussion? We make that motion. Did someone hear? Ms. Barnes? Moved by Ms. Barnes, seconded by Ms. Bielbrowski. Would you like to speak? Okay. Thank you. My name is Ann Bielbrowski. Everybody else, everybody knows me as Taki. I'm not a public speaker, so I had to write out what I wanted to say. I live at 247 Landing Road. I have worked in the land use profession for 45 years. Many of the land development proposals I have observed, especially recently, have not been a good fit, in my opinion, for the locations where they are proposed, simply because they are designed only for maximum financial gain for the developer. The purpose of the Planning Board review is to provide a balance between the agenda of developers and the interests of the people who will live with the project long after the developers are gone. As I see it, the Planning Board is having difficulty using its own rules to provide that balance. Subdivision proposals, which most people agree are overly aggressive, seem to end up in an endless slog of comments and revisions and more comments and revisions until one side just gives up, and it is usually the Planning Board. The problem with many of these applications is simply that there are too many lots, or too many units for the property they are going on. Common sense would say that you shouldn't be blasting away a giant natural ledge outcrop to build housing that doesn't comply with the zoning ordinance in the first place, 
or tearing down a 200-year-old house and barn in the oldest part of town just to get more lots. There is actually a rule in the subdivision regulations that requires due regard for historic landmarks and natural features like these, but it is difficult to enforce and the developers don't care. In my opinion, increasing the lot size requirement would help to protect the remaining undeveloped properties in the RA zone from being overburdened in ways like these. The planning board has elected to withhold recommendation of this article, partly on the theory that this would make all of the existing lots in the zone non-conforming. By that reasoning, I don't understand how any zoning ordinance could have been passed in the first place. There are hundreds of non-conforming lots in town that are suffering no ill effects from their status. Making something better does not make everything else bad. As I see it, the planning board often struggles to rein in development projects that most of us find overly aggressive. I believe that increasing the required lot size would make it easier for the planning board to do its work and would improve the character and quality of new developments going forward. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 6? I think this woman was in line and then Ms. Wilson. Go ahead and I'll get behind you. I'm Candy Stelmack, 488 High Street. Um, I think this, the importance of this article came up during the um, consideration for the lot west of me. They wanted to put five condominiums on a lot that a rational person would say maybe one or two houses at the most because it was mostly ledge. And it, their plan passed, which, because we also don't have a blasting ordinance, puts my house and all the surrounding houses and the mill and the ledge and the proposed dam in an awkward position. And I think if we had had this article here and the developer only could put in so many houses, it would have been a simpler vote that the town could have said no and therefore you won't be blasting. So I'd, I'd like you to think of this in real terms. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stonak. Ms. Wolsey? Thank you. Yeah, Mary Louise Wolsey, 148 Little River Road. I absolutely agree with the prior two speakers. I think this is an excellent article. I certainly support it. And I will call to your attention that the impact fee ordinance, which was submitted by the planning board in 2002, says under authority, nothing in this section shall be construed to limit the existing authority of the planning board to disapprove proposed development, which is scattered or premature or which would require an excessive expenditure of public funds or which would otherwise violate applicable ordinances and regulations. So the planning board is supposed to be looking out for the best uh, interests of the public and this article definitely needs to pass. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bashan, town planner. Jason Bashan, town planner. I uh, just wanted to provide some clarification on why the, the planning board did not recommend this particular uh, petition article. Um, it primarily was not recommended because it is a, a very substantial change to the zoning ordinance. And um, it's, it's something that's certainly worthy of extensive uh, discussion and study amongst the board members like they've done with other similar uh, um, ordinance proposals um, before it's brought forward. It's not about the principle of it, which which uh, makes sense, but it's more about the study of it and the potential uh, um, outside impacts that it could have um, in terms of um, pre-existing non-conforming um, lots that could be created from it based on a footnote, um, for example, footnote number six that was established uh, March of March 10th, 1970, I believe, with the 15,000 square feet. Um, that's not referenced in the petition. That might have made some difference there. Also, it does, by default, um, require one-third greater uh, minimum lot area in the Aquifer Protection District, which right now at 15,000 square feet increases the requirement within the Aquifer Protection District to 20,000. At 30,000 square feet, it would increase it to 40,000 square feet. So those are the reasons I believe the board did not recommend it, and I just wanted to uh, put that out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bouchon. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 6? 
Seeing none, Article 6 will appear on the ballot as printed.